Hey, Lord of the Rings, strategy battle game fans and middle earth role playing fans, Roman Dasel back. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be talking about the the actual movies by Peter Jackson, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I thought it was a great movie set. The Lord of the Rings was much better than The Hobbit itself. I thought The Hobbit had way too much stuff, while Lord of the Rings didn't have enough for me. And we're going to be looking at 10 things that I really wanted to see in Lord of the Rings. Before we start, so Peter Jackson, he, he made an awesome set of movies. The theatrical release was really well, considering its runtime was really long, three hours each movie. And the extended versions were even better. But I wish he'd made two different movies. I thought he should have released the theatrical version as it was for the people who don't know anything about Tolkien and The Lord of the Rings. And then he should have went back and made an entirely different movie and added all the missing elements. That would, have, that would have just something that had never been done before. A totally different movie in the extended version that you can buy in stores. Not that the extended versions weren't great, but it could have been even better. So here are some things I really wanted to see in the uh, Peter Jackson movies when they were released. Number one, I always wanted to see Tom Bombadil and Goldenberry. As well as, and that in extension goes through the old forest meets old man Willow. Now, I know Old Man Willow makes an appearance in Fangorn Forest, but I really wanted to see Tom Bombadil and Goldenberry and how Tom Bombadil interacts with Old Man Willow. Because it's kind of like the Hobbit's first adventure outside the Shire. You never, you never really get to see that, which goes to my number two. The Barrow Downs and the Barrow Whites. This was such an awesome scene in the book. It's when the hobbits are really at their most vulnerable for the very first time. Like, I know the ring race are chasing them around the Shire, but they don't really feel that sense of urgency yet, as opposed to when they get captured by Barrow Whites. I thought the Barrow Whites were a cool, evil creature, and I'm pretty sure Peter Jackson would love to have had them, but he couldn't f couldn't figure it out. Because it, all, it was all about pacing. And, what is, and then you meet Tom Bombadil again. And Tom Bombadil doesn't have a lot to do with the overall plot. Nor do the Barrow Downs, but in the Barrow Downs is where they get their swords. Instead, in the movies, you see Aragorn distributing swords like some kind of moistened bin. No, they found these actual swords in the Barrow Downs, and, they're, and they have runes on them for the destruction of the Witch King, which is what Merry stabs him, the Witch King, with and helps break the the bonds of his of his, the spell that holds the sinews together, so that Eowyn can then smash him in the face with her sword. So I thought. It would have been cool to go see the Barrow Downs. The Barrow, the Barrow itself would have been awesome to go see inside. So I was kind of disappointed they didn't show the Barrow, the Barrow Downs. Number three, the Wild Wargs. I know in The Hobbit they have the Wargs, but in Lord of the Rings, you got to remember when the Fellowship of the Ring is heading south towards the um, Moria, they run into packs of wild wolves, and they're led by Wargs. Legolas kills kills a few with an arrow and Gandalf scares him away. Next morning, Legolas can see his finds his arrow but doesn't find the body of the warg that he shot. So that's when you know the evil spirits inhabiting wolf bodies are there. That would have been another cool thing to, to see. I know in the movie they got scared off by some crows, but it would have been much better and made much more attention had it been actual wolves chasing them around. Number four, the glittering caves. Actually, more like... The, we see the Glittering Caves, but you don't see the battle within the Glittering Caves. And this is what I wanted to see. In the book, Gimli and Aomer, once the uh, Ising force of Isengard are blast their way through the Deeping Wall, Aomer and Gimli are forced to go back into the Glittering Caves, and they fight a battle there. That would have been much cooler. I know there was the idea, the concept of having Eowyn fight Yurikai within the Glittering Caves. And they filmed some sequences with that. Eowyn should have been nowhere near the Glittering Caves. There's probably some women and children in there from the Westfold, but um, for the most part, it should have been just guys fighting. And uh, it would have been cool to see that actual battle between them. So I really wanted to see that. Next, we have the Grey Company. After the after the Battle of uh, the Hornburg and when the Theoden, Gandalf, Aragorn, and company go off and ride up to, to see, see Isengard and Saruman. As they're coming back, they get overtaken by the Grey Company of the North, which are 
Aragorn's kinsmen from Arnor, the Rangers of the North, who have been protecting the lands of what was once Arnor. Having them ride down and overtake the king's company with, and then go right off with Aragorn and do the whole pass the dead thing, that would have been much better than just three guys running through the, the caverns alone. And then, of course, you have the Sons of Elrond with them. So I really wanted to see that. Next, hard to see, but I also wanted to see in the Return of the King section, the companies of outlanders that go reinforce Minas Tirith. Because in the Peter Jackson movies, you just see all the uh, the warriors of Minas Tirith, and they represent the entire army of Gondor, it seems. But in reality, there was a in the book, you had the Knights of Dol Amroth, you had the Axemen of Lossanar, Clansmen of Lamadon, you had men from the Aether, people people from Morthon Vale, and all the way from Enfalus. It would have been... I would have liked to have seen the Outland companies come and reinforce Minas Tirith, just to give more depth. This one's from the... Uh, I think this is from the Merp card game. It's hard to see the... But it's a warrior of Lossanark, which was really close to Minas Tirith, one of the closest uh, regions of the Outland companies. And only 200 Axemen of Lossanark came when they could have sent 2,000, but that... But the threat of the Corsairs of Umbar and the Haradrim forced them only to send only a portion of their strength. I know um, Games Workshop, they do have all these figures for Lamadon, Lossanark, and Dal Amroth. Would have been better to see that in the movie. Next up, you can't remember, this is just the regional map. But uh, after Aragorn and the Grey Company go through the Pass of the Dead, meet at the Blackstone where they confront the Army of the Dead, the King of the Dead and all those people. Then they ride through Lamadon into Lebanon and come to Linher. And there was a battle there between Angbor the Fearless fighting over the fords with men from Umbar and Herad. I would have loved to have seen that battle. Would have been cool to have like a, a couple of minutes of battle and then Aragorn, the Grey Company, and the, and, the, and the Army of the Dead come in and just ride roughshod. And then by extension go to Pelarger or Pelarger, however you pronounce that. It would have been nice to see the sack of the Pelarger by the Umbarian Haradrim forces. And then later on see Aragorn come and retake it with the Army of the Dead. Because the Army of the Dead is not supposed to show up at Minas Tirith. That's where it ends, at Pelarger. They rid the Southlands of forces of Sauron, and they fulfilled their oath and can go back in peace. Aragorn has the Black Fleet, fills it with people from, Leb from Lebanon, and off he goes. So I would have rather seen that than what they did do. Next up. Very Eggs of Khand. I would have loved to have seen the, the Very Eggs of Khand at the Battle of Pelennor Fields. They should have been because it's, it mentions it explicitly, especially in the reinforcements that Gothmog sends in after the Witch King is killed by Eowyn. He sends in all the reserves. Ah, axemen from the East. Look like a bigger version of Dwarves. And then you got the very eggs of Khan and such. I know Games Workshop does have very eggs of Khan, and Middle Earth Roleplaying also has them too. Next, number eight, the half trolls of Far Harad. Now the half trolls in in Middle Earth Roleplaying and in Games Workshop they have a model for it. They make them like they are half trolls. I just think Tolkien was referring to these huge guys from the far south who are black, black guys, huge tribal warriors from the deep south. I think that's what he was, they were almost the size of trolls and ah, we're just big guys. We're kind of like um, what um, in India they had these strong men who were huge. It's almost like a religious thing. These huge strong men that were used as bodyguards by certain, certain rulers. Can't remember the name off the top of my head right now. But they would have been cool to see in the uh, Battle of Pelennor Fields, even if it was just like a half troll thing. Because in Middle Earth role-playing, they do use a lot of half-trolls. And how Sauron manipulates things to make them. Number 10, I wanted to see the whole Scouring of the Shire. It, it has a chapter of its own within Lord of the Rings. And it's like the, the four hobbits come back and they find out that the Shire has been affected by the war too. And that often happens when people go to war. They, things change behind the scenes. They, at home. There's always changes at home, especially if a lot of men have left a certain area. When they come back, a lot of things are changed. 
or a lot of them don't come back. <clears throat> so the families are grieving. So I think the, the scouring of the Shire was Tolkien's way of saying that war is just, you just can't go home again after war. Things have changed. And it would have been good because then you would have saw the fall of Sar Saruman and, Gr and uh, Grima Wormtongue as well. I didn't like how they killed off Saruman in the, in the movies. I thought they should have went stayed with Canon in the extended version or in this new movie, gone through and did the Skyrim of the Shire and the end of Saruman. All right, so that is my list of uh, 10 things that I thought that Peter Jackson should have added to the extended version to make it better. It would have made it longer, yes. It would, instead of being like 12 hours of film, it would have been like 15 or 16. But as a true Lord of the Rings fan, I would have watched it all. I still watch the extended versions. I prefer the extended versions over the theatrical version. But like I said, the theatrical version was great. But then he could have went and did this totally different thing and it would have created so much more buzz. And it would have made a lot more sense in a lot of ways. It just would have been something unique. I don't think it's ever been done before. But anyway, any Lord of the Rings fans out there, let me know what you guys wanted to see in the movies. What was missing that you really wanted to see. And uh, leave comments in the comment section. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, I'm Roman Dace. I am out of here.